Okay. Well, it's so nice to have you back with us. We missed yeah. you last week. Yeah, I was my yeah, and how is your brother doing? I don't know. I haven't heard. Oh. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. He arrived in Colorado safely, but okay. after that, I have more. Okay. All I'm right, sure. as long as he arrives safely, that's all that matters. I was just like trying to give Paulette a few minutes, but she's not here, so we are. Maybe she can do play. Huh? <laughs> we're gonna do, we're gonna just pray and go forth with our program. Um, oh, here she is. Good morning. Um, I'm going to give you a little testimony before we start. Good morning, Paulette. Welcome. Um, on Monday morning, Sunday, I went for a walk, right? Because really, I have not been doing any walking. So I'm like, Lord, help me, push me to do what is right. So Monday I went back and I walked all the way from where I lived and I went down to Levitt Park and I went to that area where they have the walking place and swings and everything and I and as I was walking I was praying I met two people two ladies that was very interesting the first one she had passed me when I started going around and then she came back and I said, good morning, how are you? And we started talking and everything. And before she left, I asked her, can I pray? Can I pray with you? And she said, most certainly. And then I said, is there anything special that you'd like me to pray for? And she said, her dad. So I prayed for her and I invited her to church and she knows down this area. And she said she will come one day so we're going to pray for her her name is Yvette and then I met another person and her name is Paulette <laughs> and God was just God was so good you know I don't know but he was just enlightening me as I went on my walk and I was so grateful and thankful and I felt so good after I left there and went back home that you know he says I will put words in your mouth Sometimes you don't know what to say when you see people, but God will, if you allow him to use you, he will use you to his honor and glory. And so I just thank God for using me that day. At this time, we're going to invite Paulette to come up and pray. Give us our opening prayer. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Um, it's good to be in the house of God. And this morning I woke up and I'm like, thank God. I don't, Amen. you know, I, I'm going to church so I can sort of uh, relax. relax and think about you more. Because the days get so busy and you're like, oh my goodness, where did I put my father today? Yeah. You know, so let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for waking us up this morning in our sound minds and that we can come to rest and remember and worship and think about you. Lord, bless us all. Give us peace. Give us understanding of each other. Give us love for each other. And Father God, thank you once again for your Holy Spirit that I know is here with us. Please continue to be with us for the rest of the day. I thank you and I praise your name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Welcome to each and every one back to the house of God. And this is a very special day. Not only that the presence of God is here with us, but also this is also communion Sabbath. 
and I pray that our hearts are prepared and ready to receive that emblem. So as we continue, we're going to stand up and sing, I Sing the Mighty Power of God, number 88. Our scripture reading is taken from Psalms 34. We're going to read from 11 to 17. Can we all repeat it, please? Mm -hmm. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and deliver them out of all their troubles. May the Lord have a rich blessing to the words and to the errors. You may be seated. At this time, we're going to go into our lesson study, and our brother Kip, will be taken that. Can we pray? Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon our dear brother. We ask you to open his mind, his understanding. And Father, may you speak through him to thy people and may they, thy people realize how good and how gracious and how just and how merciful and loving you are towards us that you have not cut us off this morning but you still breathe the breath of life upon us and invite us to come into your presence now as we tabernacle as we sup and as we study and interact and understand more about thy saving grace lord we know that time is short and thy coming is even at the door we ask you to help us to prepare our hearts, Holy Spirit, 
to meet you and to prepare others for thy soon coming kingdom. Bless us now. Be with Brother Kip and Father, just touch him that you will speak to him today, to your people, and we will all be filled to know that you have blessed us aboundfully and we will understand thy words so much clearer. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. <laughs> now, the lesson study this morning has an interesting, has an interesting name. Mm -hmm. Suffering and trials but it doesn't stop there it adds one additional word expecting suffering and trials expecting satan the author of suffering if god is good why is there so much suffering in the world any answer to that? Satan. Satan. Sin. Sin. If God is good, why is there so much suffering in the world? Yes. And what happens when everything is going great? We forget God. Yeah. We forget God. Yes. First Peter five eight. What inspired insight does Peter provide about the source of suffering? 1 Peter 5, 8. It says, yeah, it's on. Um, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now, what is it that this roaring lion is, lion is about to do? He wants you to join his cause and turn your back on God. So he's going to devour you in a sense. He's going to eat you up and you're going to become part of his world. Yes. And when everything is going great. He's still out there. He's still out there. He doesn't stop. And sometimes, if there's no persecution. We don't turn to God. Yes. That is correct. You know, Brother Kip, what I always do with myself, like, if I realize that my day or my week is going really well, I teach myself and then start calling up from the Lord because I know it. And I know the enemy is right there at the door. Thank you. Yes, yes. He's waiting to slip us up and he's at the door. 
the door to our heart. How does Jesus describe this hostile foe? John 8, 44. Uh, John eight forty four, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh his own, for he is the liar and the father of it. Yes, he is a liar. And what does God love? Well, he loves his children. What does God hate? A liar. A liar. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it was a lie that caused all the mess we're living in. <laughs> yes, that is the truth. And what is he trying to do to us? He's a liar and a... Murderer. Murderer. And yet some people think he's so benign. That's right. And he just assumed them continue to feel yeah. that way because he's already got them. What additional insights are recorded about Satan's rebellion in Revelation 12, 7 through 11? What additional insights are recorded about Satan's rebellion in Revelation 12, 7 through 11? And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was there peace found any more in heaven. And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and of the power of Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. And they loved not their lives unto death. That is a marvelous statement. What information about this rebellious angel are provided by the prophet Ezekiel? This is Ezekiel 28, 13 through 17. Ezekiel 28, 13 through 17. 13 through 17. Um, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, topaz, diamond, the beryl, the onyx and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald and the carbuncle and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee. So thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. How far? 15? Uh, through 11. Oh. 
So it's very interesting. First of all, where did he come from? He was created by God. He was created by God. Did God create the devil? No, no. he created, he created Lucifer. Perfect. I just can't. That's a mystery. <laughs> I just can't fool you. That's very good. And um, uh, when I read, I look on the fact that we cannot be self-righteous, thinking that, oh, I'm so righteous, that sin is not. It just slowly creeps in. And maybe he wasn't even aware that something was brewing inside of him, but. Yes, and it was so interesting, the little slip. Yeah, it was a gradual, um, just whispering here and there among the angels, looking for those who might go along with his thinking and um, raising doubt in their minds as to who God really was. Um, because, you know, he felt he deserved to be in that inner circle. He deserved to be part of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. And later he said he would put himself above God. He would raise his throne above him because he felt slighted. And he nurtured those feelings. He allowed his mind to dwell on them. You know, sometimes you think about it. <laughs> the person that you give the most to and do the most for and really entrusted that person, sometimes they become the most evilest person against you and you never realize that they did that. Yes. And I think God, Jesus put so much into, into Lucifer. He could think five different parts at the same time. It, 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 his forehead yes. was so broad to denounce knowledge. And he was most glorious. He was so privileged. He was in charge of the ethically quiet. There was nothing that he did not give him. Only that he did, could not understand. He's a created person. Mm -hmm. But he gave him also the brain to think it. He allowed it. Freedom of thought freedom of and freedom of choice. He allowed Satan to dwell on those thoughts, even though we're told in the spirit of prophecy that Jesus went many times to talk with Satan and to try to dissuade him from his um, point of view. He, he worked with the angels and talked with them um, while this peace of heaven was destroyed. Um, it wasn't a war at first. It was just a talking, but it was leading to out and out rebellion. And Jesus tried so hard to reason um, with him and with those he was, you know, Influence. whispering to. And fortunately, many of the angels turned back to Jesus and, real, and, and turned back from listening to Satan. Otherwise, he would have taken two-thirds of the angels of heaven with him. I mean, that's that he took a third is staggering. Yes. So he was a powerful debater. He had an argument for everything. Yes, he did. He was created, but he had, as you say, he had these thoughts that started coming into his brain. And he was beautiful, and his voice. 
His voice was melodious and he could play parts. My. Now let's take a look at Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. Maybe somebody else wants to read. Yes. I'm taking over. Yes. Uh, Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. Can I read? Yes, please. the nations for thou hast said in thine heart I will ascend into heaven I will exalt I will exalt my throne above the stars of God I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north I will ascend above the heights of the cloud I will be like the most high to 14 uh, yes Yes, 12 through 14, yeah. And what was the last statement? He will be like the most high. He will be like the most high. The but yet, Ellen White says, for all of his abilities, he could not create one blade of grass. So of all the things that he was claiming that he could be, he couldn't create one thing. And he's very upset that we as people can have children. Yes. Because that is an act of creation uh, down through the generations. He can't. He can't produce one child. He can't produce a bird. He can't speak and make it so. He may sing he can, better than a bird. Yes, he can only use words. He's only got his words to, to bring people along with him. That's it. Mm -hmm. But you know, my convinced I've never heard that before. You know, I, I'm impressed with that statement right there. That he does not, he, he cannot produce. Yeah. 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 He cannot procreate. No. Yeah, and his life is in existence because God of heaven is still allowing him to live because one day he won't. So the very breath of his own being is sustained by the God he's turned against and wants to overthrow and climb above. And he doesn't, either he doesn't understand it or he doesn't believe it or he's squelched that thought so far below in his brain that all he can think of is what he can do and what he wants to do. Well, I think, yeah. yes. And I think what he, he may have come to that realization, may have. Yes, sir. Yes. But what is one of the things that he wants to do? He wants to injure God the Father. And he wants people on his side. The more on his side, the more he hurts the Father. Yes, that is one of his dastardly approaches, right? His purpose is to kill us from our sins. Yes. Share a story from scripture where someone suffered a fierce attack from Satan. Job. Yeah. Well, we have to remember Jesus, but tell me, tell me about Job.
Yes. Yes. And Job was so blessed by God that he had so many cattle and camels and sheep and children. He had everything going for him. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes, he has. He is a roaring lion, and he's trying to not only to deceive us, devour us, yes. Now, what, go ahead. What important counsel does the Apostle Peter provide for those who are experiencing an attack from Satan. 1 Peter 5, 9 through 11. 1 Peter 5. Resist, no, oh, yes, go ahead. Steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But, men, but may the God of all grace, who called us to eternal glory, Yes, uh, through 11. Oh, to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So we are supposed to resist him. Hmm. The Bible also says, resist him and he'll flee from you. Yes. And how do we resist him? <laughs> well, you have to recognize he's there. By the blood of the Lamb, that's right. Now, what additional instruction for those who are under attack by Satan is provided by the Apostle Paul? This is Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Ephesians, Ephesians 6. 10 through 18. Yeah. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds. And there... In I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. How far? To 18. I passed it. Sorry. So we're supposed to boldly say how much Christ means to each and every one. Suffering and trials we bring upon ourselves. Now this is, this is getting close to home. Maybe too close to home. But we still have to study this. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Yeah, I didn't read. 
all of it. I got the wrong part. Do you want me to go back? Yes. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in that evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand there, having your learns girt with the truth, and having your breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewithal ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and with supplication for all saints. Prayer and supplication. Um, and when it says high places, to me, that's always, I've always felt it represented the um, people above us who make decisions about what happens in this world, the people who have the power, um, the people who are in government, the people who are heads of churches. To me, that's what I've always thought of, spiritual wickedness in high places. And if the top is wicked and trying to oppress those beneath them or impress those beneath them with a point of view that is not biblical, um, we can be swayed by that because we think, oh, look, this person is so great. Look what they've done. They've written this book. They stand in this high position. They've been honored and so forth and so on. And the, all, the, all the world pays homage to them. Um, Peter, I mean, Paul here was, he's saying, to me, he's saying, governments are corrupt. Mm -hmm. Heads of, and leadership can be corrupt. Even a church leadership can be corrupt. Therefore, you have to have that armor of God to discern whether or not they are putting corruption on you. I mean, I've been told things growing up as a Christian that I should never do that the church is doing now. But when I was a teenager, I was told this is wrong. This is of the devil. <coughs> and yet today, the church is doing that very thing. Um, investing in the stock market. Yeah, I was raised that investing in the stock market is wrong. Well, where is the Seventh-day Adventist retirement plan today? It's in the stock market. <coughs> and that has bowled me over. The day I, I had to switch and I had to put money into the stock market if I was going to have any retirement money at all. And I thought, what's happened here? Why did we one time raise that issue <clears throat> and I know that can step on feet because you know people have their personal opinion <clears throat> but we have to put on the whole armor of God or we will not know what is right or what is wrong um, for example maybe I'm gonna uh, really step on feet here Ellen White says do not have any life insurance. 
when you have life insurance, you're aligning yourself with the world. And I go, oh my, how many places and how many times <clears throat> have we been taught that we should have life insurance in case somebody dies in the family so that they can financially be maintained? And I think we battle not against flesh and blood. This, we, we battle against ideas and thoughts that are in high places. And we are taught that these are okay. So we have to think it through. We can't just go along with, with the crowd. And they don't let you know what is going on. And you're continuing to put money in, but you're losing a certain amount. I, I saw a, a study of the best returns of some of the best agencies that are trying to maintain the market. And they showed that over 90% of the very best programs are losing money each year because they just have humans doing it. Yes, yes. Well, now let us move on. Oh, yes. In respect to what you were saying, maybe I think be careful, you know, who you align yourself with and who you talk to. Just be careful. And secondly, when I see that Well, I'll tell you, when I was making, I was working in uh, spinal cord injury and I was closing down my career and the last year that I was there, I made 20%, 20% of my retirement. It went up 20%. And yet everybody else was fluctuating. And I was able to read what was going on because I started to know what the greed of mankind was all about. And that is what we're looking for. We're looking for greed and what is going to inspire someone to be more greedy. And then you have, what you have to do is be able to say, his cup runneth over, or about to. And so I'd pull out. And then 
people would plummet and many of them didn't even know it. No one's out there telling you that the market's going to drop 20% the next day or at least 10% and then in smaller increments until it gets right down to the bottom. And that's when I would put my money back in and it would take off again. So, but what, what, is, what is that to me? What it is to me is I could not tell what was going on in the stock market after a time. I was able to make a good progress, but I could not detect what was going on. And I pulled out and I've never gone back since. And I only take the interest that the average person gets from government bonds. Yeah, you know, so at any rate, thank you for your, all of your comments. Now, suffering and trials were we bring on ourselves. What are some ways that we bring suffering and trials upon ourselves? Galatians 6, 7 and half of 8. This is where I wanted to really focus. Hmm. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption. You said half of eight, right? Right. Now let's also turn to Romans 1, 18 through 25. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of man who hold the truth in uprighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, and God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. How far? Through uh, 18, uh, 25. Yeah. You want uh, me to finish reading? Yes. Okay. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful and became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like to corruption, like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Yes. So it's self-worship. Self-worship plays a big role. I, I saw on YouTube a commercial about certain things and it says at the end of it, worship yourself. Those are the words in the commercial on YouTube. Worship yourself. And when people do that, going back to the stock market, it's just before a major fall.
Yes. Now, what does... And so did the covering cherub. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. You know, that's right. He was in heaven, and like you started off, he had, he had everything. He was just superb. You know, he had all these different stones and everything. Um, As his garment. He just had everything that he could possibly imagine. But it's still true. It takes the wrong path. And he didn't even see it coming. Well, let's move on. What story does Solomon share about a careless young man who brought suffering upon himself? This is Proverbs 7, 6 through 23. It's quite a long thing, so I think what I'm going to do is just give you a synopsis. He was going with some people who, he saw that they were enjoying the things of the world. And then he came across a young lady and saw that she had something to say. And he became deceived. And that's when he lost his righteousness. Now let's move on to C. Share a time when you brought suffering and trials upon yourself. Now, this is only those who we don't want the worst possible circumstances. As a matter of fact, you don't have to say what you've done, but, but share a time th going through this course. What was it that led you astray? Yes. Well, I see a lot of people who are at least reflecting upon this. <laughs> well, I want to go ahead and well, God help you all, you know. So I uh, brought myself not eating the way that I should be eating, and so now I'm a borderline diabetic. So I brought that on myself. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's not too much more difficulties than through appetite. Appetite, appetite is a very difficult thing to control. Yes. And it's our appetite for everything that gets us into trouble. And so what we have to do is we have to say, Lord, I cannot deal with this myself. Please take this from me. Um, Ellen White also says, that the Lord has a thousand ways to help you when you cannot even think of one way. That's how much he wants to help, that he has a thousand ways to help you. Yes. When we cannot figure out even one. Mm. Now, suffering and trials permitted by the Lord. Share some examples from scripture where the Lord allowed suffering or trials to come to his children 
to accomplish a greater good. Joseph, the first one that they recommended here was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Facing a fiery furnace. Facing a fiery furnace. And when did they make the decision? Right there on the, on the plains of Dura? They made the decision before, yeah, as teenagers. They made the decision as teenagers that they were never going to turn away from their God. Yes. What about some others? Who else that their the most wicked king. Ahab? <laughs> no. That went to Babylon. Ah, Nebuchadnezzar, yes. And and let's see, Nebuchadnezzar just fell into it without any information? No. Daniel told him his dreams. Daniel told him his dreams and said, you can avoid this. It was a conditional prophecy that he would... Well, go ahead. Well, Nebuchadnezzar had seen the workings of God. It, back to that fiery furnace, there was a fourth in there and Nebuchadnezzar identified him. He said, one like unto the Son of Man, which is the title given to Jesus. Yes. And um, so he had encounters with the God of heaven. His former dreams had been explained to him. He had seen the workings of Daniel and his friends. He had put, Daniel was so... Christ-like, that Nebuchadnezzar trusted him with everything, basically, in his kingdom. And when he dreamed that he would be cut down, if he did not recognize that he was not in charge, God set his kingdom up, God gave him his kingdom, and God could take it away from him. And he was told, you cannot go around claiming to be the owner of this kingdom or else you will be cut down like a tree you won't die but you'll eat grass for seven years like a wild animal yes till seven times pass over you and then nebuchadnezzar fell back into that old self that said wow look isn't this great babylon which i have built and that was it he went out in the fields, he lost his sanity, he lived like a wild animal, and it took him seven years to regain his true mind and be restored. And during that seven years, he didn't lose his kingdom. He didn't. Daniel kept it intact for him, along with other men, but Daniel was the chief of he, he was next to the king like Joseph. Joseph was next to the king. So was Daniel. And Daniel kept all of Babylon intact to return to Nebuchadnezzar, who was finally humbled and finally admitted, I am but a servant and a mass and, a, and, a, and of use through the Most High God. Daniel's God is the God of gods. And his speech was given in the Bible. Yeah. It was his understanding. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually written. And, we, and they do believe that Nebuchadnezzar wrote that part himself. So Daniel was written, but he inserted into it was Nebuchadnezzar's own writing. Yes. Now also there was Paul and Silas in the Philippian jail. And what happened in that case? 
Is that the earthquake? Yes. Well, there was an earthquake, the jail was opened, and they could have all escaped. They could have all gotten away. And the jailer came out, saw it, and drew his, his sword to kill himself. Sword mm -hmm. to kill himself. Because he thought he had lost his prisoners and that was a death sentence in Rome. If you lose your prisoner, you die. Yes. And, and what did Paul say? Paul said, stop, stop, stop. We are all here. You need not do this. We have remained through the night and we are still here, your prisoners. And that man was converted that day to Christianity. He became a follower of Christ, that and, he and his family. And his family. That That's day. Right. That is correct. He'd also seen how Paul and Silas behaved when they were being beaten. He also heard them singing songs in the jail. Songs of praise to their God after they'd been cruelly treated and beaten. Yes. Now, what can we learn from the Apostle Paul's experience with suffering? This is 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. What can we learn from the Apostle Paul's experience with suffering? And this is 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it would depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, would I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When he was facing great difficulty, it would come to him that he was doing these things for the praise of Jesus and the glory of Jesus and the Father. Now we're almost out, so I want to just cover one last thing. What is the best way to prepare for the suffering and trials we may face in the days ahead? And that's found in James 4, 7 through 10. James 4, 7 through 10. Humble yourself. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Jesus and for our trials that through these trials, as we walk with you hand in hand, we are giving, given confidence 
that this too will pass and that we will enjoy your presence forever and ever. We say these things in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Brother Kip. It's the trials that bring blessings untold in the Christian's life. And without no trials, guess what? We're not going to make it. Because that's the refining tool that God used for each and every one of us. This morning, um, I wanted to say something about mission. In 1890, the Adventist church first mission offering was to help build a special sh sh ship. Who knows what the name of that ship was called? It's named like an island, Pickering, Pickering, okay? It carried three missionary families, um, couples to that island, and they would get off the ship and they would preach. They would move among and they would preach. In their first baptism, they baptized 82 persons. And that year they asked for a, they did an evangelistic program and in the South Pacific. And in six months, it was so amazing that these people were able to collect 20,000, which was raised by adults and children. And in this day and age, it would be compared to like half a million. Saying that is bringing a light to the Sabbath school, the mission. The mission is most important to us as a church because it's in mission that we grow in number and not just in number but they grow in faith and teaching like these little brand sabbath school popping up in elders deacons and whoever they are teaching laymen are teaching them to be soul winners and they're not staying there they're just someone says you don't have to know the Bible that much. Just get a knowledge of who God is and go out and say to someone, how are you? I'd just like to say something to you. Do you know that God loves you? And just say, you know, whatever he puts upon your heart to say, and you'll be surprised to know how that person that you share that little word love you. God loves you, that will think about that. And the Holy Spirit will do that work in. So many of us are waiting for great knowledge and opportunity. We get opportunity every day. They may come very small. It, it doesn't matter what way it comes in. I heard of people taking a suitcase in their car and having clothes and all kinds of things in it. And as they pass by, they're driving and they pass by and they see somebody looking needy, they stop and they go into their suitcase and they look and see, do I have, God, do I have something that I could give this person? I may not be able to tell them anything about you, but let me show you God's love. We need not just to be coming to church, but we need to consciously make a decision of our Sabbath school mission offering. And each and every one can determine in our hearts that this quarter, I am gonna be intentional. I am gonna, as God blesses me, I am gonna put away something each time. And when that day comes, I am going to come and present it as my mission of love to God, to help missionaries. And as we read and we hear about stories, I don't know how many of you 
listens to what is happening in Mission Field and how many people are being prosecuted on a daily. Some don't know where, if they will ever see their loved one again or their children or even their homes are burned. The, everything for them are burned and they are witnessing that they take out their children and shoot them in front of them. We are living in serious days. Right now, we are privileged. We are not facing that. But when the time comes, will we be ready? Let us remember that there will be others in heaven say, if you, we make it, it's because of you. You may not be able to have said something, but you gave of your means that God has blessed you with. So let us remember to be faithful because God is holding us to be faithful to the means that he's given us. All right. At this time, we're going to close our Sabbath school with, what's the closing song? At the cross. At the cross. 163. 163. Okay. Please stand, everyone. at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away Lord we thank you because it was at the cross that we obtained salvation dear God so Father we pray that you will continue to bless us be with us throughout this day and Lord as we go into divine worship we ask you to be and to speak to our hearts and as we prepare our hearts to receive communion, we ask you, dear God, that we would look forward to that day when we shall feast with you at that welcome table in eternity. Bless us now and thank you for each and every one that have taken part and all those who have come to share and to know your great news of salvation and your bountiful love and mercy towards the children of men. Bless us, we pray, and thank you for giving us this day 
that we are alive to share and to love each other. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. You may be dismissed.